everyone. Welcome to the Fortress of Solitude podcast. I'm your host, Sergio Pereira. And today I'm joined by the one and only, the sandworm himself, Lois Kutab. Hello, hello. Wait, I'm sorry, did you say the sandworm himself? Yes, you're the sandworm. You're the sandworm from I'll Dune. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. How's it, everyone? <laughs> <laughs> well, you need to make like a weird noise of like you coming up. So like you don't say hello. Does it sound like, yeah, that, that sounds about right. That sounds about right. <laughs> yeah, man. It's like, uh, we got to watch June last night and dude, wow. Yeah. I'm like, I've been looking forward to it. Like, I'll be honest. It's one of those movies where it just looked like really, really cool. Yeah. And, um, I was, I was super psyched to see it, but at the same time, you know, you kind of try and like manage your expectations. Mm. But yeah. I was I was neither here nor there because I, I I knew nothing about it. I didn't even watch a full trailer. Like I, I just knew it looked kind of cool, and I saw that the cast was you know I mean until I got to the cinema and I saw the post, I didn't even know that Zendaya was in it. <laughs> like I knew <laughs> nothing about this film. So going in, it was great because it was a clean slate. Like anything could have happened. Yeah. Uh, look, I mean, I, I've been, like I said to you, like last night, I've, I've been reading the, the book for a while. And I mean, granted, I haven't like finished it yet. Um, but like what I read, I was like super excited for. But I, at the same time, yeah. I was a little bit worried because it, it's a little bit like Lord of the Rings in the sense that there are a lot of descriptions. There's a lot of world building that takes place. Mm-hmm. And you say to yourself, like, can a filmmaker actually do this? You know, is, is it possible yeah. to actually like adapt this? And it was one of the things where I was thinking, you know, would Dune probably have been better as like a TV series because I'm seeing like Apple's foundation at the moment and yeah. it's like very vast it's like a lot of world building as well but I'm thinking to myself like foundation I watched like uh, one episode I was thinking yeah this would not have been able to be a movie at all because yeah, yeah. of the depth of it and, and I was thinking maybe Dune is going to be the same thing but I've got to say I think you know it's, it's a good job what, what the filmmaker's done Dennis Villeneuve has done like a really really good job here because uh, man it's something else yeah, dude, it's it's so ridiculously believable. I mean, uh, it's detailed. It's like, and it's somehow even within you know, it's like you said, it's it's two and a half hours. Yeah, it's a pretty long movie, but it's still yeah. one film. You know, there's a lot of things that need to get across, and somehow it never feels rushed. I don't know if that's just me. Like, yeah, there was there was the same thing that I was I was thinking about last night after watching it. I was saying everything like made sense. It felt like it flowed. It wasn't like there wasn't a part of it. I was like, okay, you know, just get to the point. Fast forward here. You know, like everything yeah. felt like it had a purpose, and that's why. I say like the the biggest comparison I can draw here is like Lord of the Rings in the sense yeah. that you know it was divided into three films but you know for the most part you'd be like oh, you know you're not you're not bored you know it, yeah. it, it, it serves a purpose there and I think that that's what Dune does really well as well like it's mm-hmm. obviously you know they've picked up exactly where you need to split the book you know in half you know it literally is like mm-hmm. the halfway point in the book but they've realized okay cool this is how we can tell a full story here you know obviously with the right emotional beats you know you need to have something that you know makes sense it needs to be some uh, stakes at place right because that's right. always the thing and you obviously think yourself with the book you're like okay cool but when you reach a halfway point in a book it's only halfway the story like a lot of things are not resolved There's a lot of emotional beats that are like still like lingering but i think they did it quite well and i was doing some research as well this morning and apparently like they've also like tweaked it a bit, little bit like they've brought in some stuff from the second part of the book just so you can have that feeling of resolution as ah, well okay yeah just so, so yeah it feels like it's at least semi tied up you know it still needs to feel like a complete film not half a film yeah but it, it makes sense because that's a, that's what i was saying like if you just cut it off at the halfway point it's going to feel very disjointed and yes. it's going to feel like um like kind of like some of these like superhero movies at times where it's like you know you know there's two parts but like they cut it off like right in the middle and everyone like starts complaining man this sucks you know I don't get dinner watch second half like oh yeah. okay cool it makes sense now and I think that that's yeah. what they did quite well it's like they, they just treated it as like one film okay this can tell one story and obviously you know that there's a sequel because I mean it pretty much leaves away in the you know the whole part yeah, one it, sign it, is it, a, it starts a big off yeah it starts yeah. off part one <laughs> <laughs> so that's a cool what, what I'm really happy that they did though to be honest with you is that they didn't market that market it in the sense that this is only part one or part two yeah that, I that didn't know that well. until walking in yeah look I knew that it was divided into two movies because recently one of the screenwriters said that it's like oh no we had okay. to divide it because it's, it's it's too much and i agree like yeah. completely but i just find it fascinating how there wasn't marks that way they just say dune they don't say anything else yes, they don't yeah, say like yeah, okay dune part one i also one. found that really interesting 
I guess maybe what they're going to probably do is title the second movie differently. Like, so, like, yeah. almost like treat it as like the sequel versus a yeah. case of like it's just part two of a part one story. But look, I think it, it obviously worked because a lot of people didn't seem to know that either. So, you know, they're going in there a little bit blind. They're like, okay, cool, surprise. Yeah. You know, there's part two's coming, you know, sort of thing. Yeah. Before you know it, Dune 2, Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> wow. It's okay. going gonna, gonna, gonna to be ready. <laughs> the Return of the Sandworm. <laughs> or too sad when too furious yeah something like that too we can do <laughs> yeah that thing freaked yeah, me out dude yeah that was the thing man those sandworms like I, I remember like telling you last night as well that I had this whole thing when I was small like I was terrified of sandworms like you know some of the images you'd see in like your sci-fi magazines and stuff because it just looks so menacing and also like really cool at the same time and the way that the, the design and stuff the way it was done here oh Man, it was something else. Yeah. That was like one of my favorite parts of the movie was just seeing the sandworm. See, that is why I called you the sandworm because you're like one of my favorite people. So oh, there you go. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, <laughs> look, the, 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 everything that was done and, and uh, you know, this is why, I, you know, I put out a tweet saying that if you can, if you're able to and if you're comfortable, please like do yourself a favor, watch this movie in IMAX because like it really it really like brings out the most that it has to deliver you feel like the impact of everything you know yeah. the scale of things like the sandworms and, and whatever else like the 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 ships and everything that's happening it's just so grand and big and it's like it, it packs a punch it's awesome no it definitely does and I think also um, like the sound was just was something else it was incredible like the yeah. sound with those visuals it was just like it was huge yeah I know it was it was it who did the score was it Hans yeah it was Hans Zimmer yeah he did the score uh, I must say, I'm, 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 quite, I'm quite impressed with the, the score that he did because, like, lately, like, I'm a huge Hans Zimmer fan, but some of his scores yeah. lately have felt, like, a little bit recycled in yeah. a certain sense. I mean, like, for example, like, Wonder Woman, like, 1984, like, we literally mm. cribbed, like, his previous movie for Batman vs. Superman to, like, <laughs> use Beautiful Lie and, like, Wonder Woman scene. And, look, it worked, but it, it kind of felt like... uninspired by the film. I, I don't know, dude. Like, the thing is, like, he's done, he's done a few scores lately that I, I don't think have been his best work. Like, I mean, he's a legend. Okay. I mean, I think he's probably like next to John Williams, one of the most iconic, you know, composers, yeah. like film composers out there. But like the last couple of movies have felt a little, eh, like, you know, has his, like, you know, has his heart been there or is it just like getting, you know, the team yeah. that he usually works with to do all the stuff. But I must say, Dune sounded really cool. It sounded like fresh and especially like the Middle Eastern sort of influences as well. Because yeah. I mean, obviously we know yeah. Dune has got like a sort of Middle Eastern influence in it and it was really great. I mean, the way they brought in like the different elements and even the Scottish element, you, you picked that up as well with the House yeah, of the yeah, yeah. didn't you? Like with the yeah, bagpipes. I did, like, I did. Oh, dude, that was so cool. <laughs> I was like, that was like one of the most awesome things as well. Like, I just love that. It was it was so well done. Yeah, it's a really but cool mix-up of culture. But I need to ask you something because yeah. this is one of my biggest fears going into Dune. Okay. Well, just generally for like you know the general audience because. Dune is actually very, very much a philosophical novel. It's all about, yeah. you know, politics, about the earth and about, you know, us as humans kind of, you know, you know chasing around for resources and, you know, we will kill each other yes. for resources. That's effectively what it's about. It's about more than just that story. There's a lot of like philosophical elements to it. But, you know, it's the story itself is kind of simple. You know, just yeah. obviously, you know, the chosen one is like, uh -huh, you know, it's near, near in a desert, you know, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the, the whole aspect of, of, of Dune, like with all of those lessons, philosophical stuff it can feel a little bit overpowering to somebody who's coming into it fresh did you find that the story was easy to follow did you understand what was going on by the end of the movie you're like oh, okay cool so, i understand what it is yeah so so this is something i was worried about it too because when i when i came in and they told me this is two and a half hours i was like listen this is not the amount of time i would like to be confused you know? <laughs> yeah <laughs> because it starts off and you're hearing the names of things and it's not names that are easy to remember you know yeah names of races names of planets or whatever but they do a good job, I believe, in in repeating a few things or a few names or keywords enough that the important ones stick and you know who's who that's happening. Yeah. Um, and also, uh, without really giving too much away, um, I'm not going to go into specifics, but there's 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 points where kind of. Um, the main character can learn things through like an AI, you know, little things that kind of, uh, oh, yeah. you know, give you more information about a world or what's happening. And it's like, while the character's learning something, you're learning something too. And I think obviously that was done on purpose. Yeah, uh, no, just I mean, gives you a little more background. So, so they really did spend 
uh, some some good time explaining the ins and outs of the people, you know, the world, how it works, you know, um, yeah. the creatures. So I, f- for someone coming in new, I think you should be you should be fine. However, I can imagine those who have read the book or who want to read the book afterwards will have a much richer experience. Yeah, that's the thing. I think you touched on a really good point there. The exposition when it's done is done in quite a good way because we're learning the stuff as the character is learning as well. He's just as confused as us in, at some points. Yeah, like when he like reaches a new planet or whatever it's like okay like what's what how how does this work here what's actually going on and he's trying to get some knowledge as well so you're learning it at the same time which i think was done in a really good way versus like you know just characters you know walking by and explaining everything all the time yeah so i think the exposition was done in in a good way and it is very similar in a sense to i do recall certain parts in the book as well that there there was a lot of learning that took place like that the book does have a different Mm -hmm. way of of, of explaining things sometimes almost like foreshadowing like the chapter that you're reading um it's got a certain way so it's it's done a little bit differently in that sense but you know they they, they, they got the emotional core and like you know the beats of it right so i think that's awesome. done quite well and i must say because i was also thinking to myself yeah this movie might be difficult for people to understand because i was thinking of something like lord of the rings and like i mean i love lord of the rings but let, let's let's be real here a lot of it was very confusing if you had never read the book the first time. Yeah, I do. Like you're going in. I mean, 100%. a lot of these characters, they look the same. They've got weird names. I mean, you know, you look at Sean Bean. Um, you know, you look at, uh, what's his name, Viggo Mortensen. You look at all these guys. It's like, you know, white dude with, you know, you know, brown beard and brown hair. Yeah. It's like they all look the same I, after I, all. Like, I, I don't know I've who's who. I've seen the Rings films so many times and I still don't completely understand the lore. Yeah, there's there's a, there's a lot of lore. It's very rich, and I think that that's the thing. It forces like a lot of rewatches, which is great. But at the same time, if you don't connect with it as an audience the first time, you're gonna drop off. Yeah. And I think yeah. that that's like what Dune did really well is that it simplified. It made it like simple. Like you understand, oh, okay, we get what's going on here. Oh, okay, yeah. so this is the bad guy, you know, in the movie and this is the yeah. good guy. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Why do they want this? Or what, what, what's, what's going on here? Oh, this is the reason why. And I think they did that really yes. well. So yeah, for no, me, they, I'm like, they, they don't overcomplicate it. They, they really try to, to drive home, you know, sort of the main beats that you have to pay attention to, which is cool. Yeah, and that's that's the thing. I just found that because I know as well with um, you know the director's sort of style that he that he's, he's done before. It's, it's very grand. It's very like epic, very cinematic. You know the way that everything is done. Yeah, and yeah, and, and I've always loved his movies. And what I've always appreciated is the fact that. He doesn't try and overcomplicate things at times. He takes, you know, sometimes a simple concept, but he turns it into this, you know, this grand thing when you're watching it, like, oh man, this looks incredible. You know, like yeah. it, just, it looks so incredible. It tells a great story. It's got, you know, you, you feel the, the, the emotional beats and he's still able to get like pretty artistic with certain things. Like, I mean, you look at, for example, you know, Timothy Chalamet's, um, what's it called? Paul, you know, like for example, his mm. visions and stuff like that, like the way that the, the things are going on. It just, you feel that, you know, it's like, it's confusing at first, but it all makes sense after a while. Yeah. So, yeah, no, no. I thought it was done quite well. Definitely, definitely. And uh, what do you what do you think of um, of of uh, some of the sort of maybe not the animals, but the, the machines, the the ships, the. I don't. I don't know what we can talk, what we can't talk about here at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I mean, we yeah, we, 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 we obviously not giving spoilers. Plan? Yeah, I mean, look, yeah, the, yeah. the book the book is like 60 years old. So if you like, don't want spoilers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> don't go on the internet. Close your eyes. No, look, I mean, we're not going to s- discuss the story, what's covered. But in terms yes. of the machines, yeah, look, I mean, it was it was something else, man. It, it, it kind of felt like you were watching something like really innovative, something like grand, something that you haven't seen before. That, that's that's yeah, what I thought. Alive, kind of. Yeah, you know, exactly. Like the, the, te- the technology looked like inspired by nature, kind of thing, or like adapting to to different landscapes and, and worlds, and which was amazing. Yeah, it was like uh, the way it really felt was that they were creating this brand new world, something we haven't seen before, and that's how it, it kind of felt. Like I don't know if you've ever watched, like you know, like, like you go watch something like you know, two thousand one Space Odyssey, and yeah. you know, you, when you put in context of like you know the, the time period of when it was released, and you look at the stuff, you're like, man, this must have been this. This was visionary for its time, you know, because you can mm. see the influence it's had on a lot of other movies, and you see certain things and certain aspects of like, wow, and you you feel sort of grand nature. You kind of feel like you're watching something really special because because you know the context of when it came out and you think, wow, yeah. that's incredible. That's kind of how I felt with Dune at some points. I'm like, you know, there's certain things here that's going to change the way that sci-fi is done like going forward. Yeah. That's the way I looked at it. I was like, this, like and, and some of the designs. Yeah, for sure. And let's be honest, like uh, Dennis, I don't know how to say his, his surname, the, the, the director of Villeneuve. Yeah, yeah. Villeneuve. Yeah. Yeah. He does... 
Yeah, villain up. He doesn't pull any punches, man. Like at the end of the the movie, the first thing I said is, "What a budget!" Which isn't probably <laughs> the first thing I should have said because yeah, it was yeah. a brilliant film. But it's just the fact that like you would think that it would be like, okay, cool, one action set piece, and then a lot of dialogue, and then maybe another one. No, like they just they just went for it, and like everything was was, was high quality. Um, Things were exploding. Things were happening constantly. I sat there and I was just like, "All right, they, they, yeah, they, they definitely went for it, and I appreciate that." But I think he was the only filmmaker. Okay, well, one of the few select filmmakers alive today that would have been able to pull this off because, yeah, Dune has been one of those movies. I mean, there was one in the eighties that David Lynch did, and I've I've yes. seen like parts of it as well. And you know, it was that they tried to make too much of like the whole story into one film, and one of the criticisms mm-hmm. was it was too complicated. But it's become a cult classic, and you know yeah. they've, they've adapted it into like a TV series as well. I think in the I think it was 90s, early 2000s, somewhere around okay. there. So they've tried to adapt the story several times. But the thing is, that they've always thought, no, this is too grand and it's, it's too big. And it's like the budget will be insane. It's like one of those, you know, it's almost impossible to adapt. Yeah. like the story. Yeah. And I find that he's one of the few filmmakers in the world that could say, I want to adapt that. And a studio would say, okay. But he also like put in like, you know, certain terms and conditions. Like he's like, I want this to be a two part movie. There's no ways I can make this like one movie. Mm-hmm. So they haven't announced the sequel just yet. If I'm not mistaken, I haven't seen anything. I'm actually like, checking now to make sure and <laughs> because I haven't seen anything oh no that the second one's coming out or anything like that yeah. but I'm pretty certain they're probably thinking okay cool well what we're gonna do is we're just gonna decide like how, how it works okay possible sequels yeah so it hasn't been officially greenlit just yet yeah so, I can imagine that they've maybe shot some sequences or some scenes that they you know that they might use and or will use in the sequel you know in terms of just visions yeah. and stuff like that you know I assume some of that's already kind of existing Actually, surprisingly enough, this budget wasn't that insane. It's, it's quoted that the budget was $165 million. Now you would think it was higher. Dude, I was thinking 300, like easily $300 million. You think about like wow. Avengers, Avengers Endgame and Avengers Infinity War. That was, I think, a combined total of about 400 to $500 million. But look, they filmed it back to back sort of thing. And, you know, they yeah. used a lot of it, but that was a budget for that. But this one is only $165 million, which actually is not that bad. You know, like no. in, in blockbuster terms. I mean, obviously for us, for, that's... For what, what you're, for what you're seeing on screen, you'll think it's yeah. not that bad. And it hasn't been released yet in the States. So it's obviously only been released in certain marks. I mean, it's only officially going to be released in South Africa like next week anyways. Okay. So it's it's come out in a couple markets. I know it was released in the Ukraine. So it's been released in some international markets. It's made already $117 million, which isn't bad. And obviously when it comes out in the US, I am a little bit worried though about because the US market dictates a lot of what happens in terms of the yeah. future. And it is being released on HBO Max the same day. Yes, and yes, that, that's the thing that I'm worried about. It's <laughs> a day be it's in fact, in fact, apparently it's a day before the theatrical release, like a few hours before, like at 6 p.m. the day before theatrical release, it'll come out on HBO Max. So oh, I, th- I think it could be something to do with... Uh, I'm trying to see if it says anything, what, what it says here about the, the release. Uh, no, no, release. I read that this morning. Was it this morning? You, you read it. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. It's, but basically... The point is this, is that it's going to be a little bit difficult to see what, what happens in terms of like how you justified moving forward. Because I know obviously HBO Max is going all out to try to get subscribers and it's yeah. fine. But we saw what happened with the Suicide Squad. It was a great critical mm. reception. Um, it, it got released worldwide. The worldwide haul is not bad, but in the US, it really didn't do like magic, magic numbers. And sure. on, on the other hand, you look at, for example, something like Venom, you know, let there be carnage. Internationally, yeah. it's been pulling in like really impressive numbers that they've already said, oh, yeah, the, th- the third movie is like happening because yeah. you can't watch it anywhere else. Yeah. I mean, yeah. obviously, you know, these pirates, they they get cam versions, but who, who's about <laughs> that life anyways? You know, we, we're living in 4K now, guys. You know? Sailing the seas. Yeah. It's like, it's not, it's not cool. You know what they're doing anyways. Like no, like no one wants to watch that anyways. So everyone wants to watch, but if you give people an option to like watch it digitally at home versus a cinema, yeah. even though, like, as you said, I do believe Dune should be watched on the big screen. You know, yeah. it is one of those movies that's worthwhile going out. I, I'm just worried it's going to impact what the future of, of, 
how the franchise will be. I mean, we know there's a TV series coming out to HBO Max. I've already greenlit that, um, which is mm. fine, but that's going to be based on, you know, a certain subset of characters versus, you know, th- these current characters. But yes. let's just say, argument's sake, that it, it flops, you know, next week when yeah. it releases. It doesn't do so well. That means, like, you know, Dune 2 is effectively, like, it's just dead in the water. And I would be yeah. pretty sad about that. I don't know. What uh, do you think? You know what? Yeah, well, the thing is, I, I would think, I, Optimus me would think that if it doesn't do terribly well, um, and it's it's directly linked to the fact that they've now um, released it on HBO and cinema at the same uh, and theatrical release at the same time, that they would still go ahead with the sequel, but then not do um, a dual release next time and maybe leave a bit of a gap a few weeks between the two. Well, look, I mean, this HBO Max strategy is only for this year. It's, it's ending at the end of this year. And I really like a lot of okay. executives have said it, it might have not been the wisest idea. I think for obviously yeah. in the middle of a pandemic, you know, especially like in the early stages, it was great. Yeah. Because, it's you know, fair. you didn't. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it was fair. But I think also for the rest of the world, there was also a little bit of a FU, to be honest. Like, I think yeah. from like, especially Warner Brothers, because look at uh, look at something like Mortal Kombat that got released in, I think it was April, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Okay, we got it earlier than in, in national audiences but they got the option to watch it on hbo max or in theaters but yeah. as to the rest of the rest of the world like you had to go to the theaters if you want to watch it and look at what happened with the likes of black widow where we were under lockdown the cinemas were closed and we only yeah. got black widow like a month afterwards it's like the strategy has yeah. just been a little bit messed up like i think with the streaming services because they're not taking into consideration the rest of the world it's like okay well america just matters and that's it and that's i think is yeah. like yes okay we know the u.s box office is, is pretty big but sometimes a global box office as we've seen with the likes of fast and the furious movies yeah. like those ones are like pulled by your global box office like that's what gets you over a billion dollars yeah you, so, you're hurting your own bottom line by not putting in the effort for other markets yeah just just start considering the other markets a little bit more that's that's the ultimate point so obviously for us you know we can only go watch it at the cinema so you know you're brave it you know you, you'll go out yeah. if you really want to go out it. Overseas, you've got an option. And, you know, let's just say, you know, argument's sake, we kind of think, stuff, well, you know, the pandemic's still not over. Like, I'd rather just watch mm-hmm. an HBO Max and go out. It's like, okay, cool. But what is the viewership going to be like? I mean, what what are the measures that are put in place? I mean, no one knows. I mean, I think we had this discussion yeah. the other day about, like, even, like, Netflix shows, like like Squid Game or whatever, Netflix, like, oh, this is the most watched. Ever. It's like, okay, but what does it mean? Does it mean that, yeah, like, what, 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 what constitutes the view? Like, yeah, well, how many people just watched a minute of it? How many people watched it all the way through to the end? How do you deem it as a success? And I think all these measures have been a little bit, like, you know, behind the scenes. So no one really yeah. knows. And just because I, marketing... I would, assume, I would assume, like, for the sake of marketing, you would, like, write the stats in the best way. And then the stats that you have of who actually completed the series would make you decide if you actually want to make a sequel or not because I mean there was that show what was it when we were discussing that as well with the teenagers and the parents just oh, disappear the society the society yeah. society and that was brilliant and I don't know why they cancelled it it didn't do poorly um, but I assume there was something I don't know I don't know yeah, it's just, it's a very weird measure, and I think that that's also the problem with HBO Max. I mean, we've seen the whole thing with you know Zack Snyder's Justice League, where yeah. they basically said HBO Max, oh, it didn't do so well, but then they're not really releasing the, the figures. Then when you look worldwide, like especially on like Google Play and stuff, it's smashed. It's still smashing it you know, mm-hmm. to this day. So you're like, okay, that movie was a success. So why is like HBO, well, well not HBO, why isn't Warner Brothers like you know saying, okay, cool, let's just do a couple things in that universe for you know streaming, direct to streaming or something? So this is very yeah. weird, like sort of measures and I think with, with Dune it'll just be interesting to see because I know the director he's pissed about it he's not he's not happy about the fact that it's going to streaming no, as well. he's like, he, he, he mentioned like he was PC about it by saying basically like oh it's it's weird like it's a weird thing it's just a weird way to go about it <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, look, realistically, we, we'd love to see the movie do well. You want to see stuff greenlit, especially if you're enjoying stuff. And, you know, it, it needs to do well financially. That's a, that's a reality of the world we live we live in nowadays. You know, if it yeah. doesn't do well financially, no one's going to invest in it. You know, there obviously yeah. are people who've invested in, you know, executive producers. There's a lot of people they need to pay. The, you know, all that stuff, they need to take in consideration. And, yeah, $165 million, whilst it's not the most expensive movie you, like, ever made, it's not chump change yeah. either. I mean, you're not making a $1 million, like, indie film. You know, like that's you know, like the guilty or something like that, which is like, and also like so much. It, it, des- it deserves it, man. This is like 
not just a blockbuster. It's like it's it's some it's something new kind of. I mean, okay, obviously the materials existed. Yeah. But for a lot of people, it's gonna be something new and something. It's it's gonna feel fresh, even though yes, it's a sci-fi movie. Yes, right at the start, you might see some things and think like, oh, kind of Star Wars vibe, but it really does set itself apart and it does it well. Well, what I'm hoping it does at the same time is it reignites the interest in science fiction again, especially on the big screen. I think we've seen like mm. it's never gone away. Let's be honest, it's never really gone away. But it would be nice to see, like, especially like there's there's a whole rich history of like sci-fi books, and you know that that can be adapted into TV series, into yeah, into movies and stuff like that. And it would be nice to see, you know, like Hollywood have confidence in the genre again and kind of you yeah. know dive back in because we we see certain things, you know, that they keep repeating certain like tried and tested formulas, like okay the sci-fi horror is always like you know a popular one okay alien yeah. let's just do another alien movie let's just do another alien tv show let's just do this whatever you know that's always the stuff that they lean towards but like you know yeah. go right back in science fiction like stuff like dune and look even further back stuff like tron you know like stuff is just yes. know, pure science fiction just go out there and like make a stuff or just and dive into the novels there's like tons of material out there and i'd love to see it like especially yeah. as, as movies as you know tv shows i think we've seen the foundation now it's come out it's it looks really great it's is so far it's been pretty good as well like I think yeah. it's, it's a pretty decent series so just to see them have more confidence and do that and invest in it because obviously science fiction is always going to cost a little bit more than you know a company yeah. <laughs> so you need some money to invest in it but it would be great to see the, the industry just have a little bit more faith in it and yeah I'm hoping that Dune reignites that you know that it brings yeah. like you know the, a whole wave of science fiction movies and TV shows like to our screens because yeah um, yeah no look it, it, it's it's a precedent and I think like the more success stories we have like this the better for uh, sci-fi fans um, exactly and yeah personally I would love to see more of this or more like it as well you know there's so many uh, a book series like you say that I see on the shelves that are popular and like you know it's a whole saga of things that are bestsellers but there's no adaptations and you know and I, I think it's something that um, that could be cool to look at. No, yeah, definitely. But to everyone else out there, what do you guys think? Are you looking forward to Dune? Do you think it's going to be super successful at the box office, meriting any other sequels? Or do you think the HBO Max strategy is probably going to be a bit of a, a nail in the tire here? Let us know in the comments and like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And Lois, thanks again for joining me. It's been great. Thanks, man. Until next time, see ya.